For the first time since 2011, BYU will be joining a conference when they start playing for the Big 12 this fall. This will also mark the first time the Cougars will be a part of a Power 5 conference. BYU is the last team to win a national title and not be a blue blood like Notre Dame and not play in a major conference. This is the story of the last real Cinderella team of college football and their journey to Power 5 status. The history of BYU football is actually a very interesting one. Benjamin Clough took over as the third principal of Bingham Young Academy in 1892. He was actually influenced by his college studies at Michigan and the experience he had when it came to college athletics. The school began playing football in 1896, competing against Utah, the Elks, the Crescents, the YMCA of Salt Lake City, the Wheel Club of Denver, and Westminster College, and went on to win the championship that year. In 1897, BYA won their second championship, but because of a football-related accidental death in Utah in 1900, the sport was banned by all LDS church schools until 1919. After the 20-year ban, the school, which had since gained university status, brought back football on an intramural basis and they began playing again in 1920. BYU joined the Rocky Mountain Conference in 1922 and had its first winning season in 1929 under head coach G. Ott Romney. Following Romney was Eddie Kimball and between the two they took the BYU football program to the next level leading them to a 65-51-12 record from 1928 to 1942, including an 8-1 record in 1932, where they outscored their opponents 188-50. to During World War II, BYU did not field a football team, and this seemed to cause a lasting effect on the program for years to come, as in 1949, they had their only winless season in program history, going 0-11. During the mid to late 1950s, the program began to rebound under the guidance of Hal Kopp, who led them to back-to-back -back winning seasons in 1957 and 1958. The football program would have its first All-American in 1961 and Eldon the Phantom 40. In 1962, BYU would join the Western Athletic Conference, aka the WAC. In 1964, the Cougars' 30,000-seat football stadium was built, and the following year, Tommy Hutspeth led BYU to their first conference championship with a 6-4 record. The 60s were a great building period for the Cougars' football team. The great Lavelle Edwards would become BYU's head coach in 1972 after serving as an assistant under Hutspeth. Edwards became known for his early implementation of the West Coast offense and had the nation's leading rusher in his first year as head coach. 1973 was Edwards' only losing season as they would go 5-6 and six that year and would proceed to dominate the WAC over the next decade, winning the conference title every year but 1975. They would lose their first four bowl games though before winning the 1980 Holiday Bowl. This game would become known as the Miracle Bowl as BYU came back from a 45-25 deficit with four minutes left in the game. They would continue to win bowl games in 1981 and 1983 before a historical 1984 season. Before the mythical 1984 season, BYU had impressed the nation with several All-American quarterbacks, including Gifford, Nielsen, Mark Wilson, Jim McMahon, and Steve Young, who were all named first-team All-Americans at quarterback. Going to the 1984 season, Young was now gone after an 11-1 season in 1983. BYU was unranked going into the season and was led by junior quarterback Robbie Bosco. BYU and number 3 Pittsburgh clashed in the first ever televised college football game on ESPN. The Cougars were not supposed to have a chance in the game, but instead shocked the world beating Pittsburgh 24-17 and quickly shot up the polls. They survived multiple games throughout the season including coming within inches of losing to Hawaii. They continued to win games though and the teams in front of them continued to lose. They finished the regular season as the number one team in the nation and undefeated. Washington who was ranked number 2 and had the most compelling argument besides Bingham Young, declined to face BYU, going for a bigger payout and matchup with another top 5 team, Oklahoma. Instead, BYU played 6-5 Michigan in the Holiday Bowl. The Wolverines were actually the number 2 team in the nation at one point that season. Early in the game, Bosco got hurt and Michigan took a 17-10 lead into half. Bosco played through the injury and led BYU to two fourth quarter scores, beating Michigan 24-17. Since the game was played on December 21st, pundits and the media had weeks to debate whether BYU deserved the national title or not. Tyler Stimson from Bleacher Report wrote back in 2009, Brian Gumbel famously remarked, who have they played, Bo Diddley Tech? And many agreed with him. But supporters of BYU for the number one spot had a more convincing argument. Washington, who was number two, lost to USC, who lost to LSU, who lost to Notre Dame, who lost to Air Force, who BYU beat. Florida number 3 lost one game and tied another and only won 9 games. 
In the end, the argument can be summed up as this. Nobody beat anybody who beat BYU. In the end, BYU was able to shock the world by becoming the consensus national champion, becoming the last team other than Notre Dame to win the national title and not be a part of a major conference. They also became the only national championship team to play in a bowl game before New Year's Day. They were on a 24-game win streak at the time. In 1985, Bosco finished third in the Heisman voting, and in 1986, Jason Bike became the first BYU player to win the Outland Trophy. In 1990, Ty Detmer led BYU to their first victory over a number one ranked team in the nation, beating Miami, and he went on to become BYU's first Heisman winner. In 1996, BYU won the first ever WAC championship and beat Kansas State in the Cotton Bowl, becoming the first team to ever win 14 games in a season. In 1999, BYU and a few other WAC members left and formed the Mountain West Conference, with them going on to win a share of the inaugural championship title. Going to the 2000 season, Edwards announced it was going to be his last season. It was announced that the stadium would be named after him, and after a last-second touchdown pass on a fake punt to beat Utah 34-27, Edwards was carried off the field. Edwards finished his coaching career with a 257-101-3 record, and also finishing as the winningest coach in BYU history. Former Chicago Bears offensive coordinator Gary Crowton took over as head coach and led BYU to a 12-2 record and a conference title, as well as the Doak Walker winner, but that would be the high point as they would post losing records in the next three seasons. Their first losing record in three decades. After Crowton resigned, BYU offered the head coaching job to then Utah defensive coordinator Kyle Whittingham, who played for Edwards in the late 70s. Whittingham instead chose to remain at Utah and become their head coach. As a result, BYU promoted defensive coordinator Bronco Mendenhall. At the time, Mendenhall was the second youngest coach at the Division I level. Lavelle Edwards told him shortly after being hired, You have a tough job. Then there was a pause in silence, says Mendenhall. It wasn't very comforting to hear that. But then he just said, But it's a great job. Mendenhall was able to bring BYU back to their winning ways, leading them to bowl games every year he was head coach, and taking them to top 25 finishes in 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2009. In 2010, BYU announced that they would be leaving the Mountain West Conference and becoming an independent in 2011. This was due to the frustration they had with the lack of television exposure they were receiving in the Mountain West Conference and Utah's departure to the Pac-12. That same day, they announced an eight-year television contract with ESPN, which would televise 11 games on one of the networks, and BYU would retain the rights to utilize its on-campus broadcasting facilities and nationally syndicated station. The Cougars were reportedly considering invitations from the Big 12 Conference and former Big East Conference for all sports during that period, but neither opted to add BYU. In 2013, defensive end Ziggy Anza was drafted fifth overall in the NFL Draft, and in January of 2015, the Atlantic Coast Conference, which had previously announced that from 2017 forward, all members had to play at least one non-conference game each season against a Power 5 team. Schools from the ACC, Big 10, Big 12, Pac-12, or SEC, plus Notre Dame, an FBS independent, but otherwise an ACC member, but announced that games against BYU would not count towards the Power 5 requirement, a stipulation also held by the SEC. Weeks later, both leagues reversed course and opted to count games against BYU and other remaining FBS independents at the time, Army, towards meeting the Power 5 provision. Bronco Mendenhall would go on to become the second winningest BYU coach in his 11 seasons before departing for the Virginia job after the 2015 season. He finished with a 99-43 record. BYU spent more than a week courting Navy midshipman football coach Ken Numatololo to take over the Cougars program. After several days, which included a visit to Provo and public remarks after considering the job, he decided to ultimately decline BYU's offer in order to remain with Navy. Instead, Oregon State defensive coordinator and former BYU fullback Kalani Sataki was named BYU's next coach, becoming the first Tongan to be a head football coach. This was a dream for Sataki, who has always loved BYU. BYU was making around the same money the ACC was with their television deal at the time, and both seemed happy with the deal. ESPN even helped BYU line up bowl deals. The amount of money they make annually lines up with the Pac-12 schools. The Sataki era started off successful with a 9-4 record and a 12th consecutive bowl game in 2016, but the program would have its worst season in over 50 years going 4-9 after a 1-7 start in 2017 and fired offense coordinator Ty Detmer, replacing him with Jeff Grimes. In 2018, they upset number 6 Wisconsin, but finished the season 7-6. 
Tanner Mangum was benched in favor of Zach Wilson halfway through the season, and Wilson led the team to five wins in their last seven games, including a 49-18 win in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. BYU started the 2019 season strong, beating both Tennessee and USC, but inconsistency returned and Wilson got hurt. Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney both saw playing time, and the Cougars finished the season 7-6. Going to the 2020 season, many questioned whether Sataki could lead BYU to a consistent season. They looked like they were going to be tested with games against Utah, Michigan State, Arizona State, Minnesota, Missouri, and Stanford, all on the docket, but unfortunately, they would all be canceled due to the events of 2020, shutting down the world and Power 5 conferences opting for a conference-only schedule. This left BYU with only three remaining games, and somehow they were able to add seven games on the fly, including a classic against Coastal Carolina and Conway. BYU finished the season 11-1 behind Zach Wilson, and finished 11th in the AP poll, their highest finish since 1996. In 2021, BYU went 10-3 and finished the regular season ranked number 13 in the college football playoff rankings. After it was reported Sataki was in talks with Oregon for their head coaching position, BYU awarded him with an unprecedented deal extending him through 2027. At the time, only Luke Fickle and Nick Saban had won more games over the two-season stretch than BYU. They finished the 2022 season 8-5 and, and will be joining the Big 12 Conference this fall. BYU joining the Big 12 Conference is kind of a crazy, almost full circle moment if you look back over a decade ago. Back in 2011, it was believed that BYU was the leading candidate to join the Big 12, but instead the conference chose to bring in TCU. BYU administrators felt broadsided by the move. One of the long-standing rules that has been associated over the years with BYU has been its policy prohibiting participation in Sunday athletic events. The university takes the rule seriously enough, even turning down an invitation to the College Baseball World Series in 1959 because they would have to play on a Sunday. This led to the NCAA prohibiting Sunday championships in the future. It's why things like the NCAA Basketball Championship and College Football Championships are played on Mondays. Salt Lake Tribune sports writer Jay Drew and Tulsa World sports writer David Sittler have made it known that the LDS Church rule first and foremost made the Big 12 media partners balk at the idea of inviting BYU. Media partners were not happy with the idea they couldn't have the Big 12 Basketball Championship on a Sunday if they wanted to, even though they hadn't played it on a Sunday at the time. BYU missed out on conference realignment then. Conference realignment was ramped up again a few years back when it was announced that Texas and Oklahoma were joining the SEC. Many thought the Big 12 was dead in the water, but the league stayed together. Instead of watching the remaining members get poached one by one, the conference went on the attack and added BYU, UCF, Houston, and Cincinnati. Originally, many thought BYU would only be joining as a football-only member, but they were actually a full-blown conference member. According to BYU's release, the Big 12 will honor BYU's existing Sunday play policy, allowing the Cougars to schedule around Sunday competition, much like it was with the West Coast Conference and other conferences previously. Going to this upcoming season, BYU will be playing in a Power 5 conference for the first time. BYU has played a lot of Power 5 teams during their 12-year run as an FBS independent, but they are staring down 10 Power 5 opponents in 2023. Going into the season, BYU is projected to finish towards the bottom of the conference based on SP Plus ratings. It is because they do not have a lot of returning production and have had recruiting classes ranked between 52nd and 82nd going back to 2020, although they have improved every year. According to FBI, BYU is expected to go 5-7 this season with wins over Sam Houston and Southern Utah, losses including Arkansas, TCU, Texas Tech, Texas, West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State, and toss-ups including Kansas, Cincinnati, and Iowa State. No matter what projections say though, you can never count BYU out as they are the true Cinderella team that has continued to prove themselves since the 1970s. But what do you think? How will BYU do in their first season in the Big 12? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out one of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.